Right then, welcome back to part two of the GMA T50. Uh, starting off where we left off last time, and everything in clear coat painted. This time, uh, I've very lightly assembled. I say lightly, I've just test fitted all the parts, and that colour looks absolutely fantastic. That is going to go to one side for at least a week to fully dry. Uh, and in the meantime, we're going to task ourselves with cleaning up every single part of the kit. Now, lately, I've been literally cutting everything off the sprues, mounting it all, priming it and painting it in one go. And I thought, you know what, that'd be a good idea with this kit. And oh my God, there's a lot of parts to this kit. There is a serious amount of parts to this kit. And uh, this cleanup alone took about two days. Um, I think it took about a week to clean up, prime and paint everything. Um, it was a lot of work. So, yes, maybe it might be better to work in subsections apart rather than everything together. Uh, but do I regret what I did? Yes. Was it worth it? Yes, it was, actually. Uh, I got through the parts a lot quicker. It just meant I spent a lot of time cleaning parts up, a lot of time priming, and a lot of time painting as well. But essentially... As a few of you guys have figured out now as well, it is a more efficient way of working and it does make the cleanup process a lot quicker because literally you do it once and it's all done and at the end of the day, you come to finish the model off and everything is ready for assembly. So it is more productive. It can just be a little bit sold to showing on kits like this that have so many parts. Now luckily parts cleanup is pretty simple. UMP uh, Sanders doing a usual great job of cleaning everything up. I used a combination of the thinny sponge and 400 uh, thinny stick to clean the parts up, followed by the buffers to get everything nice and shiny. Um, so basically clean up the parts with your nippers first. I've got a customizable sander cut to shape here as well, just to get in the nooks and crannies a little bit easier. And some assembly is required. So these are the exhaust manifolds. Not the best compared to the real kit uh, part of the car, um, but they depict them okay. But they need glue together and film as well. There's a visible seam that needs to be taken care of. So take your time. I use CA glue because it's the quickest, easiest, non-shrinking way of filling um, seams on parts. Uh, but for now, we're using my Tamiya Plasti Weld mix to glue everything together. Give it a little bit of a squeeze. Being careful, you don't get any fingerprints in the way, and then putting everything to the side to dry for at least a day. I'd always leave a day between uh, glued parts, just because it is a hot glue, it's melting the plastic, it does take a while for the plastic to kind of regenerate. As you see, we've got some bulldog clips on there, clamp everything together. Like I say, we'll pop that to one side and leave them to fully dry. Two of those in total, so we're going to do both of them at the same time. Uh, and then lots and lots of other parts in the kit. So we need to go through and figure out which process we're going to do, what's going to be painted now, what's going to be painted later, um, what's going to be glued together now that these engine halves. <coughs> they are glued together. And then looking at the inlet manifold on top, I'm just weighing up my options with the instructions, and yet yeah, we can glue this in place as well. So basically I go through the instructions looking for anything that's all going to be the same colour so this engine block is 90% the same colour, so I know I can glue parts on. If there's other parts are going to be separate and they be kept separate, then I'll do that at a later date. Now, whilst I had everything on the bench, that UMP thinny sponge decided to flick a few parts onto the floor. And me being paranoid, I went through the entire kit with a highlighter and marked off every single part. So again, another couple of hours of my life I'll never get back, but thankfully I wasn't missing a single thing. So these parts have been uh, left to dry now, and we're going to sand back with our thinny sponge from UMP uh, and just see what kind of a seam line we're left with. Hopefully it won't be too much, but like I say, we're going to use CA glue to fill it because it is the most reliable non-shrinking filler you can get, in my opinion. Now, like I say, bear with me, guys. I am still recovering from the flu. Uh, my chest is wicked at the minute. The cough is absolutely terrible. I'm still completely deaf in one ear, so doing this voiceover is horrendous, I'm not going to lie. Um, but needs must. I need to get these videos done. And here we are. Uh, look at the instructions. This color uh, part the same color as well. So this can be popped in place. <coughs> and again, glued in place with our Tamiya Extra Thin Mix. 
like so. And then this end piece, we're going to weigh it up. Let's have a look. See how it fits. Everything fits like a glove. Absolutely phenomenal fit on the kit. Uh, it goes together absolutely beautiful. It really, really does. Uh, look at that. We can glue this place, uh, piece in place as well. But yeah. I haven't built the kit. All I can say about this kit is, wow, what an amazing kit. It really is phenomenal. If you're thinking about buying this kit, go and buy it. You will not regret it at all. Uh, it's a complex kit. It's definitely not for the beginner. But what an enjoyable build this was. Now, with everything cleared up, uh, cleaned up, it's now the laborious task of mounting everything for primer. So using a combination of uh, CA glue on cocktail sticks to stick parts in place, holes conveniently placed on the part that we could stick uh, cocktail sticks through as well. As you see, that hole's a little bit big, so we just cut the point down a bit, and there we go. That hold it in place. We can also drill holes in inconspicuous places and get a cocktail stick in there as well. And if there's any protruding parts, we can use our bulldog clips on sticks to hold the parts. So just go through, weigh up the best options, what's going to be the best way of painting everything. Uh, but for me, this is the way to do it. Not a lot of people paint on sprues. That's completely counterproductive for me because you're left where the sprue point is. It still needs painting. So for me, this is the most productive way of painting. And just when you think we're done, there's a whole host of other parts as well. Now, I did have some parts in this. I contemplated uh, carboning. There's lots of carbon on the interior, the exterior. Um, it's very, very complex, and I couldn't do it all. And I thought to myself, if I can't do it all, I don't want to do any. So I opted just to paint everything black. It will be carbon. Now, I will more than likely revisit this kit at a later date. I love this car, and I'm quite happy to build this kit again. There already is a carbon set out there for it. It's not cheap, though. So I'm hoping the likes of SK Decals or Studio 27 is going to release one. And when they do, I'll revisit this kit and we'll rebuild it. Now, some of the other parts are flatter parts. We've held on with some 3M double-sided tape. I've got an old bottle here. You've seen the tongue depressor on the other part. And we're just going to prime everything up. So this is Mr. Service of 1500 Black. I wanted a nice, smooth primer here. So this fits the bill absolutely perfect. We're through the Iwata HP, I can't really see it there. I'm going to guess it's HPC Revolution. Uh, just a couple of coats of Mr. Surface of Black Primer here. And uh, we get everything nicely, evenly primed. Same with the floor pan. Now the floor pan chassis is in two parts, and you'll see why later on. One part holds the engine bay, one holds the interior, and we build them separately. So follow the instructions, have a good look, read through, and familiarize yourself with everything, because it is a complex kit. There is a lot to this, so it's well worth familiarizing yourself with where you're heading with what you're building. And just take your time painting everything. Now, lots of little parts, tons and tons of little parts. So it's better to batch these into, I tend to do LP5 semi-gloss, metallics, and colours. That's how I tend to batch everything together. And that way I know with the LP5 and the color, uh, the metallics, I'm just going to black primer them. So we've got the Mr. Service of 1500 black again. And anything that's colour uh, will get the appropriate primer underneath. And like I say, a couple of light coats on each part. Working our way through a big priming session here, probably a couple of hours work easily. Uh, I'm not sure how many parts are in this kit, it's got to be a couple of hundred at least. Um, there is a lot to it, but just a case of going through and nice and carefully priming everything up. It is the iWatcher CR3 Revolution, I thought it was. So, apologies, it's been a while since I filmed this, obviously, not been feeling really up to doing voiceovers lately so i do apologize uh if i forget things i've done i am another two builds in so far we've got the alpha rs7 on the go and i'm just about to start the alpha uh porsche 992 gt3 as well so quite a few builds ahead with interior we've got the gordon murray orange for the interior seats so these getting primed in white this is tamia white primer <coughs> So any parts that can be painted this colour, 
including these springs. Now, these springs are very delicate, and sadly, three of mine snapped. Luckily, I kept all the parts, and luckily, we can piece them all together at a later date. So, just be careful cutting them off. Same for the engine covers. So, basically, the front driver's seat, the springs, and the engine covers are going to be orange. Uh, the instructions call out for LP61, I think it was. No, it wasn't. It was 51. Uh, and that's the colour we're going to go for. I did look for an alternative colour, um, but it's the perfect colour, looking at the actual call-outs. Uh, like I say, a couple of coats of primer will suffice for our colour. We'll let that dry for an hour or so. And like I say, we come back with the LP51, thinned with a bit of Tamiya Lacquer Thin with Retarder. We can paint all this up. And because this has a little bit of sheen to it, We'll flat it back with a little bit of dull coat later on to give us a much nicer, uh, flatter seat colour. But yeah, lovely colour, absolutely perfect colour for the seats. If you've seen the real car, it's quite a trademark point of the car. So yeah, I think it's quite an important one to do. But of course, with this car being what it is, I think you can pretty much have any colour you want anywhere. We've got some Tam uh, Tamir LP5 semi-gloss black now on all the semi-gloss parts. And again, there's a lot of these as well. There really is a absolute ton of parts to this. And there we go, some super fine silver. This is a pretty new color from uh, ProScale. In fact, I think it's, this is its debut here. Um, I was the guinea pig. And we thinned it with, obviously, it comes pretty thin from us. We throw our water CR3 again. I'm just going to put a couple of coats down. This is a slightly different paint than our usual paint system. It's a different paint system uh, we've purchased. It is basically uh, for metallic colors. So this was kind of a trial by fire. And wow, what a color. Such a finely pigmented silver. And I can see a whole host of metallic colors, which, to be honest, have already been added. Uh, and plenty more on the way from ProScale here. But what a stunning colour for the wheels. I was kind of in a quandary about the wheel colour. Should I go with a bright silver, a fine silver like this, a titanium colour, gum metal. And I chose this colour and I'm really glad I did because the pigmentation on this is absolutely phenomenal. It really is beautiful colour. So obviously a couple of coats on top, a couple of coats underneath as well to get inside the wheel. And as you can see we do circular patterns to begin with from the outside in. And then I'll angle the wheel as well, once we've done the back, to get in all the sides of the spokes as well. So you need to be pretty uh, critical here in getting all the angles properly. We're not hosing the paint on. I'm spraying very, very little paint through the airbrush. Just making sure we get nice, even coverage everywhere. And like I say, we'll spray the angles, all four angles. And we know we get all the spokes in nice and even. There we go. Absolutely stunning colour. So, as I said last time, Mercedes McLaren, with these kits being very in-depth, I thought I'd go a little bit more in-depth and show you things. So, I'm hopefully going to show you a bit more painting, a bit more assembly. Uh, this is going to be a four-part build. Uh, I think the kit does warrant it because it is an exceptional kit. Um, and this colour is absolutely beautiful, absolutely stunning. It certainly lives up to its name of super fine silver. The, pig the pigments are so fine, it is beautiful. Now, we've got bright aluminium, another great pro scale colour, the very first uh, pro scale metallic paint we had. And I'm going to give the engine several coats of this, just build it up nice and slow. Again, when I hose the paint on, it's a nice thin coat of paint. You can see nothing goes on wet at all. Just nice thin coats, paying attention to getting all those angles and nooks and crannies. <coughs> As you see, the coverage is absolutely phenomenal. There we go, absolutely stunning colour. This is about the third coat now. I'm just making sure we're getting all those nooks and crannies.
That's looking good. Absolutely stunning colour of the bright aluminium. Again, another nice finely pigmented colour, but a little bit shinier, this one. Yeah, this is its name of bright aluminium. Right, so after about three coats of the bright aluminium, as you can see, we've got absolutely fantastic coverage there. Really nice, vibrant, metallic silver colour. Um, plenty of detail painting to do to the engine still. But as a base coat, this is the perfect colour for me. Uh, quite often the engines call for like a flat aluminium. And I just don't think it suits them. I think a little bit of sheen that can be dulled down later with a wash is the way to go. We're also going to paint all the radiators in this as well. Uh, there's two of them with a interconnecting bar as well. Uh, and again, this is just a base coat. All this is going to need detail painting as well. But we'll get to that later on in the build. So we're using my new Iwata CR3 Revolution. This is solely a metallics brush now. Um, this is the fourth Iwata I've added to the range. I've got three CR3, sorry, two CR3s, a CR5, and a HPC Plus. Now we called for a gold colour on the bulkhead. This is actually a gold foil or gold plated uh, section on the real car. Now looking around the colours, I chose Tamiya TS21. So this is a spray can. This is decanted and thinned with uh, Tamiya Lacquer Thin of Retarder. A couple of coats of that on there gives us our appropriate colour. And for our brakes, we're going with good old carbon ceramic from Pro Scale Paint. So this stuff looks absolutely epic. It is one of the best colours I've developed over time. And it just looks absolutely perfect, in my opinion. For a carbon ceramic brake disc, it's a perfect colour, especially if you flat it back once dry as well. So we'll do all four of those. No PE for the discs in this kit. So we're purely going with what's in the kit, which is the plastic parts. Like I say, a couple of coats on each one will give us our adequate color. We've got some testers door coat here. Uh, sadly, a product no longer available. Uh, it was always pretty difficult to get in the UK as it was. And we're gonna use some Mr. Hoppy Rapid Thinner to thin this 50-50. Uh, like I say, real shame it's discontinued uh, because it is one of the best matte clear coats you can get. Uh, we're going to put a couple of coats down on all these parts here. So we've got the seat backs, the base and the headrest and our carbon ceramic discs as well. And it will completely flat back the tone of that shiny lacquer base paint and give us a much more realistic flat finish that we require. So, like I say, thinner 50-50. Mr. Hobby Rapid Thinner is preferred uh, thinner for this, in my opinion. It's a lacquer-based um, clear coat, matte, and it sprays absolutely amazing. It can be brushed as well, neat out the bottle. Uh, it's ideal for mask, uh, sorry, for matting uh, tyre markings on vehicle tyres because you can brush it on and it literally disappears in front of your eyes while matting the decals. So very good, and like I say, a real shame it's been discontinued, but I am lucky to have two near full bottles of this stuff, and I use very, very little at a time. So a couple of coats on each part, just nice thin coats. We don't want to get this on wet. It will dry matte, but we don't want to get it on wet. We just want to get a nice thin coat, and then we can move on to a second coat, ensure and get nice even coverage everywhere. Then we can move on to our discs as well. And again, just a couple of nice light coats, building it up slowly. Very little paint coming out of that airbrush. Very, very little. Literally misting it on until we get the adequate coverage. And there we go. All done. Now we've got some brush painting to do. So we've got Tamiya's Enamels. This is my favorite range of brush painting at the minute. So we've got Tamiya Enamel X18. Now, these are absolutely fantastic brushes to brush paint with, but you can't really handle them uh, for a good few days. And if you do, you still need to be careful. You go you know, sparingly on them because the enamel does take a long time to dry. But as long as the part's not going to manhandle, then painting them is really simple. Uh, get your favorite brush, load up the brush, and they just brush paint absolutely beautiful on the parts. No problem at all. Just nice coats. You get this in almost one coat. Like I say, just some careful painting. It's nice to get back to brush painting occasionally. Now, you could sit and mask all these parts if you wish, but I know I can get just as good a finish with the brush. 
So I've got no qualms and just quite happily brush painting here. So referring to our instructions to as and where needs painting. And just making sure we've got nice even coats. And the beauty of lacquer, uh, sorry, enamel is you can go over the same spot multiple times because it is self-leveling. It takes quite a long time to dry. So you very you really limit the brush strokes in the paint. So it is a very forgiving brush paint. And of course, because we're putting lacquer uh, enamels over lacquer, we can wipe off the enamel paint off the lacquer with no adverse effects to the lacquer paint whatsoever because they are different uh, chemical uh, paints, basically. So the enamel doesn't interfere with the lacquer and vice versa. Well, actually it would vice versa because the enamel takes a lot longer to dry. But putting enamel over the lacquer, we can wipe this off if we get a bit too much on. So be as careful as you can. But always know in the back of your mind you can remove any excess paint should you get a little splodge out of where you need it to be. So there's lots of little parts of detail paint on this. Um, we would literally be here all day showing them. So I'm going to pick a few and just show you a few bits. We've got the center console here. So there's a few buttons to paint. So a steady hand and a nice double zero brush does the job here. So refer to instructions. As you can see there, they're in front of me on the bench. We've sprayed this in Pro Scale Gum Metal. Let it dry, and then here we are. And again, because we're using enamel over lacquer, if we get paint where we shouldn't, we can wipe it straight off with a cotton bud with a little bit of enamel thinners on it. But try and be as neat as you can. Because obviously anything you do that saves cleanup is beneficial. I have my Optivisor on, my Tamiya three times Optivisor. That makes life a lot easier when doing small parts like this. And obviously a steady hand is required. Got Winston Newton Series 7. I think it's a double zero brush. Absolutely fantastic brushes. I highly recommend these. And then we're going to put some clear red over the gun metal to depict the anodized switches on the center console as well. So this is enamel clear red. There we go. Just very light touches. A steady hand is essential. And then we can move on to the other parts. So uh, suspension parts, we've got some semi-gloss black on here as well. So again, just some careful painting. You can get everything uh, painted up. Again, you can mask all this should you wish, but I know with a steady hand, I can paint these just fine. See them on the steering arm as well. Just some careful painting will do the job fine. And then on the centre part, I did plan to mask these. And then I mixed up my own kind of gunmetal colour with the Tamiya enamels. And it brush painted so well, I thought, you know what? We'll just go with brush painting it. So a couple of light coats of this. And it covered absolutely beautiful. Really nice shade of gunmetal. Literally done by eye. And there we go. I sped this up, obviously, for convenience. There we go. Now, we're in the booth, and we've got several parts to paint. Number one, we need to do the center of the brake discs. So we've got some Tamiya LP5. And we're just going to gently paint these. So these circle templates are ideal for this, because you literally slot the disc in uh, where the hub fits through perfectly. And as you can see, we got a perfect circle. So we can do that for all of those. It's nice and simple. You can pick these circle templates up from anywhere, any art store, uh, Amazon sells them, anywhere, and literally just pick the nearest size to the circle you need, pop it in, make sure all the other areas are covered. And there we go, nice and simple. Nice and easy. There we go. Right, we've got some awkward little decals to do on the brake calipers now. These are very, very tricky to do. 
So we've got our precision tweezers, a little bit of water, and some UMP decal solutions. Standard decal procedure, get the decal in place, remove any moisture out from behind it. Set it in place with your decal solution of choice. For me, it's the ultimate strong solution. Let it dry, and then we can clear coat these later on. There we go, there's our decal solution going in place. Pop that to one side to dry for a bit. And then there's a few decals on the interior of the car as well. So it's going to go through the instructions, look for anything and everything that has a decal, and get them in place now while we can. There are some quite tricky ones, so take your time. There's some nice ones for the brake, uh, clutch, and accelerator pedal as well. There we go. So they really depict the actual car's brake, uh, clutch, and accelerator pedals really well because these things are like a work of art. And then we've got some Gordon Murray Automotive logos on the engine. I think it's an intake cover, is it? I'm not sure what this is. So there we go. This is another part that should have been carboned. Like I say, we'll revisit the kit at a later date and we'll carbon it all once a set comes out for it. Right then, so trial a new paint. I've tried this before. I tried it on another kit. I forget which one it was now. But this is like a Alcantara texture paint um, that we were developing the Pro Scale. <coughs> so it's basically a slightly textured paint. So spray a few coats on, get the even coverage you want, and then bring the airbrush back a little bit to let it dry before it hits the model. And it gives you a really nice texture finish, which looks a bit like Alcantara. Now, it's still in its test phase, so I am still testing it out. Uh, there are other texture paints out there, but the texture is very, very coarse. And for Alcantara, it's not really a coarse texture. So I'm kind of playing with it to see what it looks like. So far, it seems to work pretty well. Uh, time will tell. Further results will show um, how it works. But to me, it looks pretty good. So, as you can see, we've just got a nice light coat on, and now we're just blasting, not wet coats of paint, just mid-distance, trying to get it to dry before it hits the surface, and that way it gets a bit more texture to it. Like I say, I'm just playing with it for now, and hopefully you might see it at a later date. So, some interior parts, the detail paint now, and the Tamiya um, X11 Chrome Silver comes out. This is another enamel paint. And we're going to very gently detail paint up all these interior parts. And again, there's quite a bit in the interior. It's actually quite a nice interior on this. This kit is a far cry from the Fujimi McLaren F1 we did a while back. Uh, this is a very, very detailed kit. And I had great fun building this kit. So lots of little parts of detail paint that we're working through. Like I say, as long as you don't handle this, it is perfectly fine. Um, if you're going to handle it, make sure you leave it for at least a couple of days before you touch it, because it does stay tacky to touch. And then we've got some speaker decals to go in place as well. So we'll pop these in place now too. And again, standard decal procedure, decal on, moisture out from behind it, and some ultimate strong solution. There we go, decals laid down really well. And then some really awkward masking. Now, the kit calls out for uh, gloss black around here, and I think it's because of the windows. Um, because the windows sit here, it wants a gloss black underneath to give it a gloss look. I kind of nearly didn't do it, and I thought, you know what, it's worth the time doing. So a good hour's worth of masking here, using uh, Azu 1 and 2.5 mil tapes, and then infilling with a Tamiya, uh, 6, 8, and 18. Sorry, 6, 10, and 18 tapes. So, we've evident masked off. We're in the spray booth. We've got some Mr. Hobby GX2 gloss black. Thin with Mr. Hobby level and thinner. About 60, 40 thinner to paint. We've got my Water Revolution CR3.3 uh, airbrush. And we're going to put several coats of the gloss black down until we get a really nice, even gloss black finish. So, this is probably one of the better gloss black paints out of the bottle. Uh, I do highly rate it. It can be a bit difficult to find, so I tend to stock up on it when I can. 
But we need a gloss black without any clear coat on. This, for me, is the go-to paint. Uh, it covers well, lays down really nice, and glosses up really well. It does need to go on wet, so just build it up slowly, as I'm doing here. Not hosing it on, but just build it up nice and slow. So we get a nice gloss coat, as can be seen here. So, well worth the time spent. Now, would it look any different with just a semi-gloss underneath or even primer through the glass? I don't know. Uh, at the end of the day, the glass is reflective, so it does shine through. But I've done it now, and um, that way uh, we know it's all done. And here we go. And that's where we're going to leave the video today. We've got a nice gloss black framework there. Um, we'll be back for part three very, very soon. Thanks for watching today. I will catch you all very soon for part three, in which we'll crack on building this absolutely fantastic Tammy kit. See you later, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.